guys, so today is a little bit of a different video. I wanted to talk to you all about omiyage in Japan. I've been wanting to film this for a while, so I recently went to Nara. And I bought this omiyage. And then this one here obviously is from Kyoto, where I live. And then these two are from someone in the dorm went to Wakayama and bring back some. So I had some more to show. Omiyage is often translated as souvenir into English, but it isn't a souvenir. A souvenir is something that you buy on your trip to remember it. Omiyage is like more of a, like an obligational gift you give to someone else. So it's generally given to people that weren't able to make the trip. You bring it back for your co-workers and boss and family. Omiyage is like usually proportioned into individually wrapped, beautifully packaged as you can see by the ones in front of you. So they're perfect for sharing with people depending on how many you buy and what they are. For example, this pack here is just a six pack and it was around 650 yen. They had a 10 pack and a 20 pack or 24 pack or something as well. And the 10 pack was I think around $12. And then over here I have some famous mochi from Kyoto and it is in a 10 pack I believe. And it was about 600 yen as well. So the prices are very different depending on how many is in a box. Uh, Japanese omiyage is typically a food product as well. You have to keep that in mind when buying omiyage that the best omiyage gift is a food related item and the food is generally something specific to the area. It's made in, in the area or it's famous in the area. For example in Kyoto, Kyoto is very famous for its matcha products. So a lot of the omiyage you can buy are matcha. For example, I have these matcha giant pockies as well, although I wouldn't consider them as omiyage. I have only ever seen these in Kyoto, so. So you may be wondering where you can buy omiyage. Omiyage is found everywhere in train stations and airport. Particularly, they usually have massive stores, but you can also find them in supermarkets, castles, shrines, and temples. I bought the mochi recently at a temple that I went to last weekend, so they are everywhere. My favorite omiyage probably is Tokyo banana, and I'm kind of grateful that I don't live in Tokyo because I think I would have eaten my fair share. And my next favorite is the, the Nama Yatsuhashi. They are amazing. So in this pack I have strawberry and matcha flavoured ones and I absolutely love the strawberry ones, they are my favourite. I have never had just a plain matcha one so I'm excited about that and they come in like hundreds of different flavours. I have tried so many different flavours. So I wanted to share a little bit about omiyage with you today just for a kind of different video than what I usually do. So I'm going to open them up and show you what they look like and then I'll give them a little taste for you all. So here is my omiyage from Nara. As you can see once I took off the beautifully like wrapped paper there's an even prettier box and then you just open it up and can pull out the sweets. So as I mentioned earlier they all become individually wrapped which is really good. So I'm going to open one up and show you what they look like outside of the wrapper. So here's what it looks like. I don't know how well you can see it but it actually has the flower that is on the packaging imprinted onto the, I don't know what this is, the cake. So I'm going to give it a little taste for you all. Yeah, I don't really know how to explain what the taste is or the elements are because I don't know anything in English that comes remotely close to it. The outside is kind of like a cross between like a bread and a profiterole pastry. Like I, I don't know what it is. It is so delicious though. And then the inside just melts in your mouth and it's just really good. And if you ever get the chance, definitely try and find some manju because they're always, they never disappoint. So here are the, the mochi from Kyoto. Here they are. So they look kind of disgusting, but trust me, they are delicious. So this is what they look like. They're like little triangles and they are like stretchy and just delicious. A lot of the time, um, say for like these ones at the back here, they will have cinnamon on the outside. So, I, like I said, I've never just had a green tea one, so I'm a little bit excited. 
I'm going to open it up for you and show you what it looks like. So here it is and I decided to use a knife because I thought it would come out a lot prettier. I thought the inside originally was going to have red bean paste in it, but it doesn't look like it does, so I'm going to give it a taste. So I'm not too sure what's in the middle, all I know is that it is very green tea um, tasting, obviously a green tea mochi. I think I would have preferred it if it was red bean paste. I feel like it's just lacking something, usually green tea goes very well with red bean. So this one was a little bit disappointing. Next I'm going to try the strawberry ones for you and I know I'm going to love them because they are my favourite flavour. So here is the strawberry one, as you can see the strawberry paste is in the middle. So I'm going to try this one. So as I mentioned earlier, yes it did have cinnamon on the outside, but it's really a subtle cinnamon flavour, it's not too strong. It's really nice, it complements the strawberry so well. I absolutely love this one. It is my favourite one I have tried for so far and as I mentioned I have tried basically all the flavours apart from the chocolate ones. So I also have these ones from Wakayama and these ones are cinnamon cookies. So I will show you what they look like. It is a very tough cookie. So I'm going to try this piece. I'm not the biggest fan of cinnamon stuff on its own. Like I love cinnamon when it's added into like say apple pie or custard. On its own though, um, I'm not the biggest fan. And these, even though they look extremely dark, it is so subtle and nice and like refreshing. It is really delicious and I would recommend buying these. Last up I have this little jelly and I'm actually really scared of this. By the looks of it, it has an umeboshi inside it, and I love umeboshi, um, I just don't know if I'm going to love it in jelly. But the packaging is really cute with the little cherry blossoms on it, so I'm going to open it up and try it all for you guys, even though I'm scared. So here it is, I finally got the lid off, it was a lot more challenging than expected, and as soon as I opened it, I just got bombarded with umeboshi smell. So I'm going to try a little bit of the jelly without the umeboshi. That actually tasted nice. It kind of, I don't know how to explain it. It kind of had like an artificial cherry-ish like aftertaste. So I'm going to eat the whole thing and hope that the umeboshi doesn't have a pip in it because that's going to be annoying if it does. It probably does though. So now I'm not too sure if it was an umeboshi or maybe something to do with cherry blossoms because it kind of has the cherry blossom artificial aftertaste like the cherry flavour but it smelled like an umeboshi so now I'm just really confused. The actual pip itself that was in here had absolutely no flavour. So here they all are. I hope that you guys found this video interesting and maybe learn a little bit about the omeyage gift giving in Japan. Leave a comment down below if there's anything you want me to cover related to Japanese culture or anything like that. Like if you have any video suggestions by all means, like, leave it below and I'll do my best to make it happen. So don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this. And I will see you all in my next video. Bye guys! Hey guys, Shadowsun here and as you can tell by what's in front of you,